you're going to have to work with me today as I am doing an experiment to try and understand what some of the suppression around my videos are related to. I suspect it's because I use specific words and in the algorithm, those words are associated with suppression. So you're going to have to read between the lines. For people who regularly watch my videos, you will understand what I'm talking about. So we're going to be making reference to some random circulating virus and the fact that some people may have had elephants. And I am looking for patterns with regards to if when they have had elephants, when they get reinfected, do they end up with unusual pathology related to the autoimmune system? And in order to explore this, I am going to share with you a case report. Now, the reason I'm having to do these case reports and not actually do autopsies is largely because nobody seems interested to understand what the pathology occurs whenever there is re-exposure to one of these randomly circulating viruses after people have had elephants. Does that make sense? Therefore, in order to make sense of it and to find what I am looking for, I am therefore looking at case reports generally because they are not realizing that hidden in their data are the answers that I am looking for. Good. What we're going to be talking about today is a very simple but complex case. Post-infectious autoimmune disorder involving the CNS, central nervous system, and PNS, peripheral nervous system, following infection. Now, the first assumption that I have made in terms of this presentation, because the elephant status has not been declared. However, the individual involved is 75 years old. They are based in a first world country in Europe. It is very likely that they did have elephants. So therefore, this is a perfect case to look at when we are thinking about what can be the outcomes if there is re-exposure after elephants. Good? Does this make sense? So let's look at the case. In this case here, what we had is somebody, 75 years old, who had associated neurological um, symptoms <clears throat> related to an infection seven weeks before. And so what we're going to be doing is looking in a little bit more detail as to exactly what happened. And the reason why this is so important is because I have been explaining over and over that without autopsy data, you can't predict the science. And so anyone who tells you they understand what's happening or what's going to happen, they have no idea because they haven't been doing autopsies. I think I'm close to having a good understanding because I have been following autopsies and histological examinations. So in this case here, we have a 75-year-old woman. She started off with a headache, ringing in the ears, what we call tinnitus, dizziness, and then progressive upper limb weakness. And she had changes to her sensation in her hands. That's why we call it glove-shaped. What's important is that the patient had been infected with some chest symptoms seven weeks before. Remember, I have made the assumption that this is a re-exposure or a challenge study because there's a very high possibility based on the age, based on the location, this is Germany, that there have been elephants associated, okay? What she then presented with was proximal weakness of the arms and the legs. She didn't have any reflexes. And when they did the conduction of nerves, this is the electricity signal in the nerves, 
it shows that there was only mild damage with a few signs that the myelin, the, the lining of the nerve was damaged. So this was where she presented. So a very important um, point. And there is an image here that shows the timeline as to what happened. So here was the initial presentation with regards to the infection. Then this was the starting point of the symptoms. So if you look carefully, the symptoms started about two and a half weeks afterwards. Going down the line, by the time you reached four to five weeks, there is worsening symptoms. And at this point, the person can't manage at home and they end up in hospital. So do look carefully. Exposure, hospitalization, seven weeks. Then they went on to do the investigations and sadly, this person passed away suddenly. Now, what I'm trying to explain to people is that if you don't under, understand the autoimmune patterns, you will not realize that this is how presentation occurs. Now, it just so happened that they were aware of the infection here. But imagine that she presented with these symptoms and nobody had checked or known that she had an infection. This is where we get into the really problematic area because we then have to try and we, if you don't know that and if you don't look for it, you will not be able to make any sense. So when we go back to the case, I've highlighted a few things in orange here. The case report is insisting or Im implying post-infectious autoimmune disorder involving the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. These symptoms are consistent with the theory that the neurological symptoms associated with the infection may be due to the immune-mediated responses rather than direct viral invasion. Now, for those people who have been following me for a long time, they will understand that I have always said it's not the virus that kills people. It's the immune response to the virus. In the same way, it's not going to be the virus that is causing a lot of these ongoing symptoms. It is the immune response to the virus. And if you don't understand that, nothing makes sense. So here is where we get down to the crucial bits of information. Neuro Inflammation predominantly in the brainstem, the basal ganglia, and associated with inflammation of the nerves, what we call a neuritis, of the trigeminal, which um, supplies the face, and the vagus nerves. Now, this vagus nerve is very important, and I'm going to do a separate presentation about it. But for the time being, just know that some of the major nerves are involved in this autoimmune process. And this is occurring after someone has been exposed. And again, just to remind you, when we are looking at timelines, this is how it presents. First, you have exposure. Two to three weeks after, people are feeling unwell. And that's because it's autoimmune, because they have recovered from the virus here. Now they start having strange symptoms. Five weeks later, it's worse. Then you have hospitalization. Now, not everybody goes on to die, but that's a separate issue. But the point being, this trajectory is what, if you don't understand it, nothing is going to make sense. Now, a few more points around this case here. What they found was quite severe inflammation, oops, I've lost it, severe inflammation associated with axonal, that means the nerve, the, the long part of the nerve, like the cable, axonal loss, with macrophage invasion. 
Now, the macrophages are a specific kind of immune cell, which based on all the research we've been doing, we think this is absolutely central to a lot of the pathology around both severe, long COVID and even elephant related complications. And this invasion occurred in the trigeminal, vagus, and the peripheral nerves. This person actually had involvements, neurogenic atrophy of the muscles, because by the time she had reached hospital, she was almost tetraplegic, couldn't move her arms or her legs. When they looked at the nervous system pathology, because they went on to do an autopsy here, they found multifocal T-lymphocyte infiltrates, predominantly perivascular in the brainstem and basal ganglia. For anyone who has been following autoimmune responses, you will know that perivascular T-cell infiltrates very strongly point to autoimmune responses. When I looked at the locations that were affected, the brainstem, the basal ganglia, the nerves, I came to the conclusion that this was probably autoimmunity to neuropylin 1. That's one of the um, one of the proteins that can bind to the sticky part of the virus, the part that they have stuck around and appears to be an elephant. And so therefore, my point is that I would expect that this kind of neurological system, um, um, symptom or pattern would occur much more broadly. Now, here's the problem. And this is something I will have to address in more detail at a separate time. This case is at the very severe end of the spectrum. And this is why this person actually went on to die because they had a cardiac related event and this was the cause of death. But that's a severe end of the spectrum. What we have for many other people is mild to moderate, ongoing, unusual neurological patterns. Can't make sense of it. Just keeps on progressing. Sometimes they don't even remember that they had an exposure. And this is how it works. We need to understand this. And without the autopsies, we continue to guess. And luckily for me, I am getting the pieces of the puzzle because even though they won't formally do autopsies, I can then search for these case reports and find the patterns that I have been saying. Just remember what I said when people were arguing, well, there's no evidence of autoimmunity. And I'm saying the only way you're going to see autoimmunity conclusively is through autopsies, because that's when you're going to see the perivascular infiltrates around the blood vessels involving the organs. And that's pretty clear cut that this is an autoimmune response. The reality is, I don't think they want to know. But guess what? Who holds the can when things go wrong? This is something I usually say to patients whenever they have high blood pressure. I tell them, who is responsible for your blood pressure? Because if you have a heart attack or stroke, don't think we call your doctor to find out if your blood pressure was well controlled. No, we don't. It's your problem. In the same way, if these autoimmune predictions and this case report is another example of what I have been saying for five years, you will hold the can. Nobody will come and hold your hand. Nobody will apologize. Nobody will care. You just need to look at what has happened to people who have had adverse effects from having elephants. The same will apply to everyone else. The responsibility, I believe now, is almost completely in the hands of the general public. It is your problem. And if you don't support people like me to ask the question, well, the consequences will come in due course. Sorry to be so blunt, but sometimes I'm feeling frustrated. Otherwise, have a great evening. Look in the description for more links, and I'll continue to share and keep you updated on the sands.
a hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.